Hi. Analog synthesizers typically output very simple waveforms, whether it's square or saw, sometimes triangle and sine, and that's pretty much it. But it turns out that by using simple tools like a mixer and VCAs, you can create a lot of interesting waveforms and timbres, and using a module like this, you can actually create an analog wavetable synth. Now, wavetable synths are typically something you could only do digitally, on a computer or on a digital synth. In this clip, I'll show you how you can get results very similar to Ableton's Wavetable or Serum, but on an analog synth with analog waveforms. I'll start with a simple example. This is a Moog Mother 32, and it can generate only two waveforms, saw and pulse. Now you'd think that these are the only two waveforms that it can generate, but that's not the case because it also has a mixer which lets you bring in external audio, but if rather than bring in external audio, I connect the output of one of the oscillators into the external audio and select the other over here, then I can use the mix knob to shape the waveform. And if I bring in pulse width modulation, then I can morph that as well. And I can also use the mix CV input to modulate my wavetable position with voltage, not just manually. Okay, so let's kick it up a notch. If your synth has more waveforms, and the Z3000 from TipTop Audio is an example, then you can mix those as well. Now, to mix so many waveforms, we're going to need a mixer and a bigger boat. I'll use the Mixverter from Voices. This lets us bring in up to eight sources and is either an attenuator or an inverter and attenuator based on the position of these switches. So for the sake of the example, I'll start simple. I'll plug each of these oscillators into a Mixverter input, bring up the levels on both, and connect the output to our scope. And if for a second I'll bring down both waveforms and turn this up, you can hear one of them. Right, this is a triangle. And then as I bring in the sawtooth, you can see I'm getting a shark tooth waveform, which I can design. And this is the shark tooth waveform you can see on a lot of Moog synths like the Sub-37 or the Mini Moog. Now, of course, I'm not just limited to those two waveforms. I can bring in the sine and the pulse. And as I gradually bring in these different waveforms, I can create brand new timbres or colors or tones and shapes. If I flick uh, one of the inputs, say the sine, to allow inversion, I can also subtract voltages in my wave shape. So you can see that this is a nice way to create different shapes. And what if I wanted to modulate this? So to go from this sound to this sound. Well, I could do that rather simply with a VCA and an LFO, so that rather than me turning this knob, I can have maths do it over here for me. So I'll take the sine wave, for example, plug it into this VCA. I'll take a different cable so that you can see this as a modified output. Then create an LFO here and use it to control this VCA. So if I bring my level up and bring the modulation up, I can get this real-time modulation at different rates, of course. And for example, if it's, you know, too buzzy, I can take my sawtooth and lower it. Right? So a really nice way to create new waveforms with an LFO, VCA, and mixer. Okay, so that's a nice way to create custom and evolving timbres, but let's kick it up a notch. I'm going to take all four outputs and route them through the VCA. 
and then route that output back to the mixer. And now it's time for me to introduce this little interesting module. This is the A144 from Dopefer, used in conjunction with the 248 VCA module from Voices. And let me explain what's going on here. So 248 is a simple VCA module uh, that has two stereo VCAs and four mono VCAs. The A144 is a really cool module that can take one linear voltage source and basically control these VCAs so that they open and close in a sequence as the source voltage goes up. This is useful for a number of things, which I'll talk about in the future, but for now, one of these is creating effectively an analog wavetable synth. So all I need to do is connect the output of each of these four steps into the inputs of my VCAs. And then check out what happens as I cycle through the different waveforms. And thus, the A144 plus four VCAs plus four waveforms is essentially an analog wavetable synth. And of course, I can modulate this as well. Now, here I'm modulating my wavetable with an LFO from Maths, but I could also do this with an envelope, for example, so as a sound starts, it cycles through the different waveforms. Pretty cool. So that's how you morph between simple waveforms. Let's try and morph between complex ones. I'll clear this all up. So I'll create a simple complex waveform by combining two waveforms in maths. I'll get this to cycle as well. And let's hear the output. So the principle here is very similar. We're using a mixer, this time a mixer built in maths. I've also shown this in my maths tutorial, but rather than take two waveforms that have the same frequency or cycle time, I'll take one as sort of my base waveform, create a simple triangle waveform, and then add on top of it a faster waveform, and I can tune the frequencies to make them harmonically pleasing. But this is essentially a new timbre or a new sound that I'll use as one complex step in my analog wavetable synth. By the way, everything I'm showing you now is based on audible range frequencies, but you could do the same thing with LFOs, morph from one LFO to another LFO. Okay, now let's get this guy in the mix. So the next step is to make sure that my new complex waveform is the same frequency or tuned to the previous more simple waveforms or oscillators. And once I get them in tune, then I can use the mixer knobs to manually morph from one waveform to the other, just like I showed you before. And the shapes and sounds get more and more interesting as I mix in different sources. And now that I've got them tuned, through the magic of editing, we'll pass them through our analog wavetable synth. So now I've got sine wave in number one, maths in number two, and then square or pulse in number three. And I can morph between them, between the simple sine wave, to whatever maths is doing and to a pulse and all the stages in between. Feeding voltage into the CV in of the A144 morph controller is basically like changing our wavetable position in Serum or Ableton wavetable. And the nice thing is that we get all these timbre options before we even applied a filter to the sound. So that's pretty much it. If you enjoy these kinds of tips, I've actually created an ebook with all the tips I've ever shown on my channel, and it's on my Patreon. I have that thing too now. Hit like if you found this information useful. Click subscribe if you want to see more. 
If you have any questions or any other ideas, put them in the comment section below. Thanks very much for watching.